This is the Future of Automotive with Steve Greenfield. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Future of Automotive on CBT News, where we put recent automotive and mobility news into the context of the broader themes impacting the industry. I'm Steve Greenfield from Automotive Ventures, and I'm glad that you could join us. This was a big week out in Las Vegas, as over 100,000 people descended on the city to experience CES 2024. CES, formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show, ran the whole week from January 9th to 12th. And if you thought NADA was large, CES is a much bigger show. A big part of CES over the past few years has been its evolution into a major automotive show. This makes a lot of sense given how technology is increasingly interwoven into the automotive industry. Automakers typically take the opportunity for a sizable presence at CES, but this year showed a more muted presence by the large car companies. For example, Ford, GM, Stellantis, and Toyota all decided not to exhibit. While sad, the lack of the larger automakers left much more opportunity for the remainder to stand out. The new West Hall is where the big automotive players exhibit. The theme in this hall this year was vehicle tech and advanced mobility, where we saw large vendor displays from Hyundai, Kia, VinFast, John Deere, Caterpillar, Magna, and Amazon Automotive. Honda debuted an all-new global electric vehicle series and showcased key technologies. This included the Honda Saloon concept car, which harkens back to some of the supercars from the 1980s, and the Honda Space Hub, which looked like a futuristic minivan. Honda said it will introduce 30 new EVs by 2030, a number that includes both battery electric and fuel cell powered products. Separately, Afila, the brand created by a Sony Honda joint venture, exhibited its latest prototype with a lot of new technology announcements. The map of the convention center's West Hall reveals that Hyundai had the largest footprint. The company shared a number of developments related to hydrogen fuel cells and their software-defined vehicle technology. In addition, Hyundai Supernol a subsidiary unveiled a product concept for its eVTOL aircraft and demonstrated its associated vertiport. Vietnamese automaker VinFast, who recently announced they expect to have 125 franchise dealers as part of an initial rollout, and then hundreds by the end of 2024 throughout the US, presented two vehicles at CES that could be coming to US dealerships within a couple of years. An impressive electric pickup called the VF Wild, and the VF3 microcar that could sell for under $20,000. The VinFast pickup looks a little like electric Hummer from the front, and a Tesla Cybertruck from the back. Electric vehicle and charging news made a splash at the 2023 CES show, but their present this year mirrors what's going on in the automotive market overall, a bit of an EV growth slowdown. This year, EV announcements were much more subdued than last year's show. In fact, major charging companies like EVgo, ChargePoint, and Electrify America didn't bother to exhibit or break any new news at the show. Looking over the exhibit hall space, autonomous and self-driving technology no longer seems to be an auto industry obsession. Problems at GM subsidiary Cruise highlighted a troublesome 2023 for robotaxis in particular. Ford announced last year that they would move away from fully autonomous tech. Both Ford and GM took huge losses on automated technologies last year. Unlike previous CES expos, we saw very few self-driving demonstrations at all this year. Having said that, a number of companies were showing off how using AI inside vehicles is making them smoother and safer for drivers through better in-vehicle virtual assistants and cabin monitors. Beyond the automakers, Tier 1 automotive suppliers used CES to showcase cutting-edge technologies. We saw new offerings from companies such as Qualcomm, Mobileye, Bosch, Magna, and others. On the back of their announcement with Hyundai, the Amazon automotive booth appeared to be one of the busiest at the show. The North Hall hosted a number of smaller vendors in the vehicle tech and advanced mobility theme and was also worth checking out. But by no means were the automotive and mobility innovations limited to just these locations. For example, the new Honda Sony JV vehicle, named the Afila, was showcased in the Central Hall. In recent years, CES has become much more focused on startups, 
I believe that the earlier stage companies in the smaller booths at the Venetian made up the best part of the show. The Venetian Expo hosts a number of interesting sections, including the Innovation Showcase and the Country Pavilions. Finally, I had the chance to be up on stage twice on Monday of this week, both sessions being at the Connected Car Conference. I kicked off the conference with a keynote on the state of vehicle electrification, and then I had a chance to moderate a panel on the evolution of the dealership sales channel with panelists Mike Stanton from NADA, Jeremy Beaver from DGDG, Beth Hill from Ford Direct, and Jessica Stafford from Cox Automotive. CES is the premier conference for new technologies and has become a major conference for breaking news in the automotive and mobility industries. It was great to be out there this week, and I'll be excited to get back there at next year's show. So with that, let's transition to our companies to watch. Every week we highlight interesting companies in the automotive technology space to keep an eye on. If you read my weekly Intel report, we showcase a company to watch, and we take the opportunity here on this segment to share that company with you. Today our new company to watch is iGage. iGage works in the marine space and aims to make any ship smart without changing anything. iGage is driving the digitization of, the mar of marine transportation. The company helps to digitize processes aboard ships, allowing operators to collect data, share data, and act on data. iGage measures ship performance, fuel consumption, and condition. They create transparency between owners, charterers, and report on emissions, and they focus on improving safety and complying with regulations, while at the same time reducing the boat's carbon footprint. Ship recycling is an expensive process with a heavy environmental impact. The company prolongs the life of maritime assets of any age through non-invasive digitization, condition monitoring, and anomaly detection. If you'd like to learn more about iGage, you can check them out at www.i-gage.com. So that's it for this week's Future of Automotive segment. If you're an auto tech entrepreneur working on a solution that helps car dealerships, we want to hear from you. We are actively investing out of our dealer fund. If you're interested in joining our investment club to make direct investments into auto tech and mobility startups, please join. There's no obligation to start seeing our deal flow, and we continue to have attractive investment deals available to our members. Don't forget to check out my book, The Future of Automotive Retail, which is available now on Amazon.com, and keep an eye out for my new book, The Future of Mobility, which is almost done and will be out early this year. Thanks as always for your ongoing support. We look forward to working closely with you to create the future of this industry. Thanks for tuning in to CBT News for this week's Future of Automotive segment, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching The Future of Automotive with Steve Greenfield. 